Hi, I'm Mark Miklich, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies. In today's video, we're going to discuss setting up one of our SQ laser systems on a variable speed production line with a photocell and an encoder. Okay, first of all, some of you might be wondering uh, what application would call for an encoder or why would I use an encoder. Well, we're going to use an encoder with our laser in any application in which the production line or the product speed uh, might have variable speed. Okay, so if your product you know, speeds up or might slow down a little bit, the encoder will be installed to help keep the print consistent relative to that speed change. Okay, to plug the encoder in, you'll see we've got a four pin uh, male connector. This is just gonna plug into the back of our laser here. We do have a labeled encoder port, naturally with a four pin female connector. So this is just gonna plug right in, and then we'll thread in place. Okay, first important thing to consider is placement of your encoder. Uh, for our application today, it's really straightforward. We just have the encoder set up directly on our conveyor belt. Okay, so our encoder wheel is making direct contact with the belt and will always make direct contact with it. Okay, that's very important. We always want that contact, so we want the wheel always spinning with that conveyor belt and how fast that conveyor belt speed is changing or moving. Okay, if you want to make sure that the wheel is making, uh, you know, good contact with the belt or whatever you're set up on, um, we could turn the conveyor on at this time, just make sure the wheel is, uh, you know, rotating consistently. One thing we probably don't want to do at this point is have the system in marking mode. Um, so you'll see right now we have an amber light on the laser, marking is off. Um, we can still have power on, okay, we're just not marking. Uh, so we can turn the conveyor on, make sure that the wheel is making good contact and turning, and then we can go from there. Okay, the next thing we need to do after we've got the encoder installed and verify that we're making good contact with our conveyor is we need to make sure that the laser is actually tracking the encoder properly. So what we're gonna do is go into some system settings here and I'll show you how you can verify that we're set up correctly with the way the encoder is set up and which way the, the wheel is actually rotating. Okay, so again, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we're actually um, tracking the encoder correctly. So what we're gonna do from the home page here, is we're gonna hit our keyboard icon, we're gonna hit control, and then S. And we can just click OK on this software uh, information. And this will give us some additional options here. And what we're gonna do is access this page right here. Now, <clears throat> what we can do here is uh, change our encoder direction if necessary. What we're gonna watch first is if I start up the conveyor and the encoder it, wheel is spinning, uh, we'll start to see a count at the very top of our screen. We need that count to be uh, incrementing upwards. If it's counting or incrementing down, that means we have the encoder direction set up incorrectly relative to how the wheel is actually spinning on our conveyor. Okay, so we're gonna turn the conveyor on just to show you what this would look like in both scenarios. Again, we are not in marking mode, obviously, at this point. Um, so we're really just testing the encoder setup. Okay, so you'll see that we are actually counting up uh, with our encoder pulses. So our encoder direction uh, set currently to AB is correct. I'll show you what it would look like if it was not set correctly, you'll see that count is going down. So that's what we're trying to avoid here. So again, all we have to do is come in here, look at this really quick, make sure that count's going up, okay? Once you've got that set correctly, just hit your check, and then we're gonna back out of this menu, and we actually do not need to reboot the entire system with this change, so we're just gonna say no. It'll take us right back to our home screen and we're ready to move forward. Okay, now that we've got our encoder direction programmed properly, the next thing we need to do is tell the system that we actually are using an encoder, okay? So what we're gonna do, again, we're on the home screen right now, we're not in marking mode, we're gonna go into our parameters page. 
Now, some of these parameters uh, that will be specific to the photo cell. Um, and we're also working under the assumption that you've already got a message created. If you have not gotten that far, you will want to watch our video on message creation and message management. And you'll also want to quickly review our video on setting up on a production line just with a photo cell. That will cover uh, photo cell specific settings. We will still briefly touch on some of those. That video will be a little bit more thorough specific to just the photo cell. Okay? So now what we're doing in this page is, again, we're going to enable the encoder. Okay? So we actually already have it enabled on the display right now. But where we can do that is on the very bottom of this page, bottom left hand corner, we have external encoder. You only have two options. One is null, meaning we're not using an encoder. Okay, if we have it set to null, really the only change here is instead of encoder resolution, we just have line speed. Okay, if we enable our encoder or set external encoder to isolated input, you'll see the system will change to resolution. Okay, the nice thing about our lasers, lasers are, if you enable the external encoder, it will default uh, basically to the ideal encoder resolution setting. Okay, we will still show you a couple scenarios in which the resolution is set improperly, but typically set to 100 when we enable this should get you a, a very clean, good looking print. Okay, so that's all you have to do to tell the system that we're using an encoder. Okay, and again, your resolution is basically already set up for you. Now, in this application, we are also using a photo cell, which is fairly common. Okay, so the photo cell is our print go, or that's going to trigger off our product and tell us when we want to print. The encoder is just keeping the print consistent if our product speeds up or slows down. Okay, so we still have to consider some of the photo cell specific parameters. Again, we cover these uh, in depth in the photo cell specific video. One thing we need to worry about here still is our marking delay. Okay, how long do we want the system to wait in millimeters after we give it a signal from the photo cell? We've already got it set up for the specific product that we're running today. For our application, we're just marking once on our product, okay, and we are triggering off the rising edge or the leading edge of our product. So those, those are some important photo cell specific settings we want to make sure we address. Okay, again, for this application, we're just printing once per product. We will revisit this page later and discuss how to set the system up for continuously printing on a product, okay? So maybe we're dealing with an extrusion line, uh, let's say some PVC pipe, for example, where we just have a continuous flow of product. We need to repeat print on that product. We will discuss how to set the system up for those applications. Okay, once we've got those parameters set up, uh, you know, especially the encoder specific parameters for this video, we're actually uh, okay to center our code and begin testing. Now, again, we are making some other assumptions here. You've already focused the laser on your product. You've gone through the aiming process. You've addressed the pen parameter uh, settings. Okay, so power output, draw speed, things of that nature. Again, if you're not familiar with any of that, if you haven't gotten that far, you're going to want to watch the videos on, again, focusing and aiming on the product, setting up messages and setting up those pen parameters, okay? Okay, so again, last thing we need to do once we get everything set up is just click center for your template and it's going to move the text uh, to the best location to kind of make life easy on the laser. Okay, so again, we're ready to start testing. All right, a few things to cover again. Uh, one is, you know, we've already set up uh, the encoder direction correctly. We've enabled the encoder. Again, if you've watched our, our setting up with the photo cell video, this is pretty easy. Okay, we're just introducing an encoder on top of that. So again, enabling it and making sure it's tracking correctly are really the main things you need to do. We've also, again, already got the laser focused properly on our product and aimed where we want it on the product. Again, if you're not sure how to do that, make sure you watch our video on focusing and aiming on your product, okay? So once we've got all that done, we're ready to start testing. So we're gonna start marking, right? So we hit the start key on the laser. We should have a green light. We're ready to turn the conveyor on and start printing.
Okay, so you'll notice we got a really good uh, quality print right off the bat. And again, if you went through the photo cell setup uh, initially, you've got your delay and everything set up already. Again, it's really straightforward introducing an encoder into the equation. Again, with that default resolution, you should basically be ready to go. Um, one thing I will point out too, as we're testing here, I, I do have just a piece of tape on our product, just a little trick for you guys, so you don't waste product while you're testing. Um, so yeah, I mean, simple as that. Uh, the only thing we're gonna do now is show you what it would look like if the resolution was set too low or if it was set too high. After that, we'll actually change speeds on our production line and show you that the system will consistently mark in the same spot with the same quality, you know, regardless of how we manipulate the speed. Okay, so now here's an example of the encoder resolution being set too low, all right? Okay, so you'll see our text really got compressed here and it actually got too far to the edge of our product. All right, so this is what you would typically see if your encoder resolution is set too low. Okay, now here's an example of our resolution being set too high. Okay, you'll see the text is still legible, but our code is really starting to stretch out and some of our characters are starting to open up a little bit. All right, so those are symptoms of our encoder resolution being too high. Okay, so we're back to our proper encoder resolution setting. And now all we're gonna do is show you, you know, what the ultimate goal here is. And that's gonna be if our product speed is changing. So we're gonna send our product through at about 40 feet a minute. You'll see how the print looks. Then we'll crank the speed up by another 20, 30 feet a minute, send it back through. You'll see we'll get the exact same printing result. Okay, so now we've gone up about 25 feet per minute in product speed. And again, you'll see we ended up with the same result. Okay, so we've got it all tested out. Uh, we verified that our print's gonna land where we want it. We just tested you know, various speeds with our line, proving that the encoder is doing its job. So once you've got all that dialed in, we can send product through, give it a final test, and we should be ready to go. Okay, now when we are doing this and we are testing, you know, if you're testing at the maximum speed of your production line, when we're working with an encoder, for example, there are other variables you still have to consider. A big one is gonna be your draw speed, which is in your pen parameter page. We did cover this in other videos. Um, but I'm gonna bring it up again here just to be thorough. Um, you know, if we were having a good quality print at lower speeds and you really start to speed the system up and some of our text just starts getting cut off, Oftentimes, that's actually a symptom of the draw speed being too low, okay? So you guys will want to review our video on that. Make sure that, uh, if necessary, you might need to increase your draw speed and also maybe manipulate your power output, okay? So again, we're not going to go back into detail on those in this video. Um, just make sure you're aware of those settings. You've reviewed those videos so you understand how those also come into play. Okay. The last thing we want to discuss here regarding uh, encoder-specific settings are, again, those uh, continuous printing applications. So an extrusion line, for example, where we might just be continuously printing on that product. Earlier, I gave you know PVC pipe as an example of something that's just extruded, and it's a continuous feed of product that we just continuously print on. So we're going to go back into our parameters page. I'll just show you briefly how we would set up for an application like that. We're going to leave our resolution the same. We're still leaving our external encoder set to isolated input, which means we are using one. But what we're going to do first is, if we're just continuously printing, we're going to go ahead and max out our marking repetitions. So we're going to set it to 9999, all right? 
That tells the system to just continuously print as long as that encoder wheel is spinning. Okay, we're also using a photocell in this application, so the photocell would be active as well. All right. After that, just a few things to consider. One is we can still use our initial marking delay. Okay, so let's say again, for example, as the pipe first comes through, the marking delay will be that initial print delay for the very first print. After that, we have repeat spacing. Okay, that'll be the spacing in between each subsequent print. So we could set that different than our initial delay, or we could leave it the same. We could set that to 42, however you want to do it. Okay, so in, these are two important settings uh, that will very likely need to be addressed. Just be aware of what they're for. Uh, after that, the rest of our settings here uh, really are the same as the same way we set them up for just a fo photocell specific application. Okay, so marking mode auto, we typically always leave that on. The laser just takes the path of least resistance, if you will, uh, marks the easiest way possible. And then our X and Y direction are basically your inverse and reverse. Swap X and Y axis, that just depends on how you have the marking head set up. Okay, and again, we've covered uh, all of these settings in previous videos. Um, then product direction, naturally, we can reverse it here. Um, so that's about it, okay? So that's the difference between a continuous printing application and uh, relative to the application we just did where we just did one print uh, per product, for example. So that's all you have to do. Max out your marking repetitions, make sure you address your marking delay, repeat spacing, you should be good to go. And one more note, once we've done that, once we've got our settings correct, we can hit that checkbox and guys, don't forget to save your message after you've got all of this set up, right? We wanna make sure those parameters are saved to this template. So we've already got, of course, a message built. So we're just gonna click okay. And since we've updated some settings, we're just overwriting that existing file and we're done. All right, that wraps up our video on setting up one of our SQ laser systems on a variable speed production line while using an encoder. If you'd like to see more videos on our lasers or any of our other products, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also don't hesitate to head over to squidding.com for more information on all of our product lines. Thank you.